Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer. Today we're here for yet another Civilization VI Leader Spotlight, where today we'll be taking a look at Frederick Barbarossa of Germany. So Frederick's first ability is known as Holy Roman Emperor, and it makes it so that he gains an additional military policy card slot. In addition to that, he gains plus 7 combat strength when attacking city-states. So Holy Roman Emperor, I think, is very strong, especially just with the kind of the, the meta of Civ VI right now to attack city-states before the AI can get them. Holy Roman Emperor is very good. Uh, so the additional military policy uh, slot is very nice. It just allows you to run a, you know... An, it just allows you to run another policy card, which can be very nice in the early game for giving you a little of a little bit of a boost into whatever you need to do. Uh, even if you need to fight barbarians, you can run both the cards for combat strength against barbarians and the one for production towards units as well. So it just gives you a little bit more versatility uh, with your army. Uh, the plus seven combat strength when attacking city states is also very good. Just because plus 7 combat strength is quite a significant amount, and having that in the early game can allow you to, to totally destroy your neighboring city-states in the early game. So you can go get yourself some uh, extra land very early on, and that'll just allow you to get a little bit of a head start, and in most cases you're able to do this before the AI can attack them. So I know that a big thing in Civ 6 right now is for the AI to take all the city-states, but with this you can actually compete a little bit and you can take some of them as well. So Holy Roman Emperor, a very strong ability. Frederick's second ability is known as Free Imperial Cities, and it makes it so that each city can build one more district than usual, exceeding the normal uh, limit based on population. So Free Imperial Cities, once again, very strong. There's not not much to it, it's pretty simple, it's just that you can build one more district than usual, and that's very good because it allows you to get on one more district than usual, which means you'll be able to get more yields, it allows you to be a little bit more versatile, maybe if you're focusing mainly on science, you can build both a, camp or both a campus and a theater square in a city, or a campus and a commercial hub, or really whatever you want, so you can use this however you'd like, it's, it's a very versatile and just quite a good thing, and it really makes it so that you don't have to make as many choices for which districts you want, because you can get a lot of them, and that'll make it so that you're not going to fall behind as, uh, uh, like as bad in things that you're not focusing on, so Free Imperial City is also a very strong ability. Moving on to Frederick's unique unit, we have the U-Boat, which is a special unit that replaces the Submarine, has a melee strength of 65, which is the same as the Submarine, a range strength of 75, which is also the same as the Submarine, and a movement of 2, which is also the same as the Submarine. It also has a production cost of 430, which is 50 less than the Submarine. In addition to this, it gets plus 1 sight and plus 10 combat strength when in ocean tiles, so that would be deep ocean tiles, not the coast tiles. So the U-Boat, I think, is pretty strong, uh, especially if you're going to be fighting in ocean tiles, because then you get the additional plus 10 combat combat strength with it, which that is pretty significant. The additional plus one sight is also nice because it can help you reveal enemy submarines. Um, so the U-boat is able to see enemy submarines, that'll just make it so that you can see them earlier, you can attack them, and you'll have higher combat strength as long as you're in the ocean. So for that, I think it is quite good, and submarines just in general are quite strong units, so the U-boat is just a little bit better of one. It's not a huge upgrade over the submarine, but it is nice. As far as Germany's unique district is concerned, we have the Hansa, which is a special district that replaces the Industrial Zone. It provides plus one Great Engineer point, which is the exact same as the Industrial Zone, and it has some uh, unique adjacency bonuses as well. So it gets plus two production from an adjacent commercial hub. Uh, this is not per adjacent commercial hub, I believe it's just from uh, from having one adjacent commercial hub, you get an additional plus two production. You also get plus one production from each adjacent resource, so that is any resource, luxury, or bonus, and you get plus one uh, production from every two adjacent districts, which is the same thing that pretty much every district that provides yields in the game gets. In addition to this, the Hansa is half of the production cost of the industrial zone. The Hansa, I think, is a very strong district. It allows you to get a lot of production, and you really don't have to have too many specifics to get a lot of production from it. As long as you're careful and you make sure that you put your Hansas next to your commercial hubs, you can put them in like a sort of a diamond shape to get two commercial hubs and two Hansas uh, for two cities, and that's going to provide at least three production for each city, which then you can fill that with buildings as well, and the Hansa ends up being a very nice thing, especially if you take the policy card that doubles its adjacency bonuses as well. You can get some ridiculous uh, production on the Hansa, so I think the Hansa is a very strong district. And now it is that time to talk about some of the strengths and weaknesses of Frederick Barbarossa and the Germans in Civilization VI. So for the first strength, I really do like the Hansa. I think that the Hansa can provide a lot of production, and for that, it is really useful. So just having the Hansa next to commercial hubs, if you're able to plan your districts well, I uh, I think that the Hansa can be very useful to a game. It can make all of your cities quite useful. It's especially useful if you're not uh, playing on New World Age, because in New World Age, it is pretty easy to get industrial zone adjacency bonuses, but if you're playing on Standard or Old, then it can become a little bit more difficult, but with the Hansas, you can get pretty consistent uh, adjacency bonuses on the Hansas in every single city, so I think that that is a very strong part of Germany, and it makes them really good for playing for a space race victory. 
the other strength is that it is very easy to prey on city-states before the AI does, so uh, as I talked about, that's a really big problem in Civ 6 right now, that the AI just loves to attack city-states, but with Germany, you get quite a significant combat strength bonus against them whenever you're attacking them, so that makes it so that in the early game, you can find your nearest neighbor, you can attack them, you can gain a little bit of extra land, make it so that the AI is not going to take that land, and it's just beneficial for you in a lot of ways, so I really do like uh, the, the, the bonuses that Germany gets against city-states, um, and I think it is quite strong. And the last strength that I have for Germany is that the extra district slot allows for a lot of versatility. So just having one more district slot makes it so that you have to make a lot less choices. So in a normal game, whenever you're playing, you would have to decide maybe between a campus and a theater square or between an industrial uh, zone or a commercial hub. But with Germany, you can, for the most part, pretty much just get both. And that's going to make it so that even while you're focusing on, maybe if you're focusing on science, you'll build your campuses first. But even so, you'll still have the extra district slot to build a theater square as well. So that's going to make it so that you don't fall too far behind in culture, or you don't fall too far behind in gold, or anything really that you want to do with that extra district slot you can, and it's going to make it so that you also don't have to have incredible population to get a lot of districts. Um, and districts are such a crucial part of Civ 6, and a crucial part of just getting a lot of yields in Civ 6, that I think having a, a one extra slot for a given population is really, really strong. Uh, one of the big weaknesses of Germany, though, is that it's not always beneficial to conquer near nearby city-states. So if you spawn in the game and you have a really good city-state next to you, like Geneva or maybe Auckland or something like that that you could really make use of, or Zanzibar, that's also another really good one, you might not want to take them over. And whenever you don't want to attack your neighboring city-states, that really kind of takes away a lot of the strength of Germany because it's going to make it so that you're not going to be getting that early land, you're not going to be utilizing one of your abilities, and that really does suck. So... If you're spawning next to good city-states, it does really suck because you lose a lot of your potential as Germany. I mean, sure, it's good that you're spawning next to a good city-state, but it is a little bit of a weakness nonetheless. And now it is that time to give Germany their tier ranking. So if you're new to the series, what I do is I give each leader a tier ranking in each of the four victory types of domination, science, culture, and religion, and these rankings just gauge their general proficiency at attaining either of the rankings. In addition to this, I also give them an overall ranking, which just kind of pits them against the other civs in the game and gives them just kind of a comparative, a comparative value for where they fit in amongst the other leaders. All of our rankings go from S to F, with S being the highest, C being average, and F being pretty bad. So domination's up first, and I think that Germany is deserving of an A in domination. So Germany has three main things that really help it be quite proficient in domination. So the first one is that they get that extra military policy card slot, and that extra policy card slot can really just help you do whatever you need to make sure that your domination game is successful. So maybe you can use that for some lessened war weariness, some increased unit production, some reduced unit maintenance, some uh, increased loyalty, anything that you need you can use that policy card for, uh, yeah, that policy card for, and for that reason I think it's quite good. You also do have the additional combat strike that gets city-states, which can help you expand in the early game, which can make it so that you can get more land out, get more cities, uh, use those cities to produce more units, and then use those units to get more land. So it kind of just works as like a nice little snowball. Also in the late game, if someone has city-state allies, then you can, you, can, <laughs> you can go through them quite fast if you're playing Germany. So I think that is quite good as well. And the last thing is that the Hansa makes it really easy to pump out just a ton of units because the Hansa can provide a decent amount of production. You can get those pretty consistent, consistently in every city with consistent adjacency bonuses as well. So having that much production allows you to produce a lot of units uh, quite quickly and that will just allow you to steamroll whoever your neighbors are or whoever you really want to attack. So for that reason, I think Germany is quite strong and quite deserving of an A in domination. Science is up next, and I think that Germany is deserving of an S-tier ranking in science, so Germany is definitely one of the best sciences in the game, if for nothing else than just the production that they can get from the Hanses, uh, as well as their additional district slot as well. So with the with the production from the Hanses and the districts, it allows you to build a ton of campuses, build a ton of Hanses, and you'll still have room to not fall behind in the other things that'll allow you to just get your, get your civics pretty fast, your techs pretty fast, it'll have you uh, with a lot of production to maybe build buildings in your campuses, and then in the future, it'll allow you to build space parts very fast. So Germany is one of the fastest civs at building space parts. You can get just so much production from the Hanses. If you then have Magnus in a city, then you can uh, you can get vertical integration on Magnus. And since you have a lot of Hanses and a lot of factories, uh, all of those factories will stack up if you have vert vertical integration on Magnus, and you just get ridiculous production. So just the fact that you're incentivized to build so many industrial zones that'll also help you get great engineer points, which then just make all of your Hanses even better. And it just kind of all works together to help you just be a total boss at science, so I think Germany is definitely a very good science civ and quite deserving of the S tier ranking. 
Culture's up next, and I think Germany is deserving of a B in culture. They they aren't terrible in culture, but they aren't really all that outstanding. So you you do have the extra district slot, which can help it, uh, w which can really help you just put down more theater squares while also still focusing on other things. So I think that is quite strong. Uh, you also do have the additional production, which can be helpful towards um, towards a culture victory. It's not as helpful as you know just a straight up tourism modifier or something like that. But that extra production can help you get some crucial wonders like Cristo Redentor or the Eiffel Tower. So so that can be a little bit um, beneficial towards your culture victory, so I think for that reason they are quite deserving of a B. Uh, religions last, and I think they deserve a C in religion. They don't really have too many bonuses towards religion. Sure, you can build a few more holy sites, but whenever it comes to religion, all that you really want is just straight faith output, and they really don't get any bonuses to their faith output. And whenever you're also whenever you're playing religion, you don't really need much else. So having the the extra district slots isn't going to help you too much. So for that reason, I think they're pretty average and deserve a C. And for their overall ranking, I think Germany is deserving of an S. Germany is just an overall very strong sieve, just because of their versatility and their specialization as well. They're one of those sieves that can do everything pretty good, but they still do some things even better. So, with Germany, you could go domination, you could go culture, you could go science. I mean, I wouldn't recommend religion, but you technically could go it. Um, but even just with those three, that gives you a lot of versatility as well. And they're a great science sieve, they're a pretty good domination sieve, they're an alright cultural sieve. So you have strengths in each of the three, and that just that makes them incredibly strong. In addition, you can go and attack your city-states, that's going to hurt the AI, because then the AI is not going to be getting their free cities that they have by spawning next to city-states, so that's very good. Um, you also have your additional military policy slard which policy slard policy slot card which can just give you a little bit more of military versatility and everything just kind of works pretty well with Germany so I think they are a very strong sieve and quite deserving of the S tier ranking so thank you everyone for watching I've been the Saxy gamer if you enjoyed the video feel free to like if not feel free to dislike if you're looking for more civilization 6 content feel free to subscribe thank you for watching and goodbye